If you've been struggling to figure out whether you're doing things right or not as a parent, you may want to check out this video and get a better understanding of parenting styles. According to research, there are four different parenting styles, and each of them can affect things like our children's behavior, their social skills, their performance in school, and even things like their involvement in bullying. In this video, I'll unpack each of the four parenting styles and discuss what the data says about the consequences of each style of parenting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, welcome to the Black People Parenting YouTube channel. I'm Dion, the founder of Black People Parenting, also known as BPP. I'm also a media personality, workshop presenter, and keynote speaker. But most importantly, I am a husband and also a father of two. One 18-year-old college student and one four-year-old who happens to be on the autism spectrum. So let's talk about these parenting styles. For most of us, we didn't come into parenthood thinking about what style of parent we were going to be, right? We just leaned into what we knew and learned the rest along the way. Well, studies have shown that there's a little bit more to this parenting thing than we may have considered in the past. So let's start with the definition. What is a parenting style? Well, simply stated, a parenting style is just a parent's approach and behavior towards raising children and their emotional atmosphere that is created as a result. So it's our overall attitude towards parenting and the outcomes that occur, right? A lot of times when talking about parenting styles, I get asked if it's possible to have more than one style, or could you have one style with one child and another style with another? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes. And we'll dive more into that shortly, but it's important to remember that parenting styles aren't about being this or that, right? Because as parents, none of us are monolithic. Our attitudes and approaches can oftentimes change based on circumstances. So let's look at the four parenting styles. The first style that we're going to talk about is authoritative. Next, we'll talk about authoritarian. And while those two sound similar, they're actually pretty different. Then we'll dive into discussing permissive parenting and we'll close out by looking at something called uninvolved parenting, which is sometimes referred to as neglectful. Furthermore, the four parenting styles can also be broken down into two categories. Those two categories are demandingness or control and responsiveness or warmth. Now, demandingness, that refers to the extent to which parents control their child's behavior or demand their maturity. And responsiveness, well, that's the, the degree to which parents are accepting and sensitive to their children's emotional and developmental needs. For example, if your child comes to you with an issue that is bothering them, do you respond in the moment or do you brush them off and get back to them whenever you can? I created this image to help us make it make sense. Authoritative and permissive are more warm and accepting while authoritarian and uninvolved tend to be more cold and accepting, cold and unaccepting. Authoritative and authoritarian lean more towards a higher level of demandingness, while permissive and uninvolved are more warm and understanding. So again, there isn't a this or that when it comes to parenting styles. We can adapt different styles based on environment and circumstances. So here are some statistics on parenting styles. In the United States, approximately 46% of parents use the authoritative style, while 26% use the authoritarian style, 18% use the permissive approach, and 10% fall into the uninvolved category. Since authoritative is clearly the most used style, why don't we talk about that first? Authoritative parents set strong boundaries while remaining supportive, nurturing, and allowing kids to express themselves. This style allows parents to have open communication with their kids. Parents set clear boundaries and expectations around important issues like academics and behavior, chores, things like that. 
These parents listen to their child's point of view, even though they may not always accept it. Also, authoritative parents are more nurturing and responsive to their children's emotional needs. The data shows that children are uh, more likely to see positive outcomes when raised with this particular style. They tend to be more friendly, they're more self-controlled, and they're a lot more goal-oriented. I think this is because the authoritative is the most balanced of the four parenting styles. This is the type of parenting that I strive to uh, accomplish with my children. Because I think it's important that we treat our kids with the same respect that we want to be treated with. With this style, I think, I think it allows for children to be seen as human beings and not just as a piece of property or something that we, we have complete control and authority over, right? So next is the authoritarian style. Many folks in previous generations uh, grew up under this style of parenting. It's the do what I say and don't ask any questions approach. It's also very strict and follows the notion that children should obey their parents blindly, regardless of the long-term outcomes. These parents are driven to do the best for their children, but there's also a lot of structure in the home and rules are made clear, but there's little room for things like emotional warmth. Attempts by the child to reason or negotiate with the parents can be seen as, as talking back. And of course, you know, in most black, black households over the years, the number one rule is you don't talk back. The number two rule is children ought to be seen and not heard, right? Well, a lot of us will say, that's how my parents raised us and, and we turned out fine. Well, the data tells a different story. According to research, the authoritarian style uh, of parenting leads to low self-esteem. Kids uh, are poor judges of character. Many will rebel against authority at some point. And a lot of times they have difficulty managing their own anger and emotions. So while many of us, many of us have been taught that physical discipline, harsh punishment, or even public shaming are the way to get desired results from our kids, right? The research suggests that these approaches don't always result in long-term changes in behavior in our kids. Next is permissive parenting. While these parents have a lot of warmth in their home, they don't have a lot of rules. Their approach is a bit more relaxed and they're not really monitoring their kids or, or setting any boundaries. So the child ends up getting a lot of their emotional needs met but they don't have the structure to help them develop in other areas. Permissive parents are more inclined to ignore when the child is misbehaving in public, or they may easily give in when the child has a tantrum or uh, doesn't get what they want. I personally think that there's a, lot, a, a wide range of things that fall under the permissive category. And some of those things are just circumstantial, right? For instance, if I come home from a long day of work and, and my four-year-old is, is whining about not having his tablet, there's a strong possibility that I'm just going to give it to them just to get them to be quiet, right? And that's just keeping it real. So for me, sometimes my level of permissiveness has a direct correlation to my level of energy. <laughs> if, if we were to look at the data on permissive parenting, you'll see that it suggests that children raised with this particular style show levels of self-control. They tend to be more impulsive and they have lower levels of achievement. They also lack personal accountability due to lack of boundaries. But on the flip side of that, kids raised with this particular style have been shown to have higher levels of self-esteem, and they may be more resourceful than kids raised with other styles. All right. So lastly, we have the uninvolved parenting style. These parents are usually present physically, but not present emotionally. They are emotionally detached and unresponsive to the needs of the child. And for the most part, they don't make time for the child. A lot of times these folks are carrying trauma of their own that manifests itself in their relationship with their kids. Also, sometimes these parents are more focused on other priorities, such as work or chasing their own dreams at times. And they detach themselves from building emotional connections and bonds with their children. But let's be clear. There's a difference between being a busy parent and being an uninvolved parent. The uninvolved parent flat out has no connection or interest in the child's well-being. These parents could also be suffering from mental illness, that those issues need to be addressed, such as depression, drug addiction, alcoholism, anxiety. This is by far the worst type of parenting style. And the effects that it has on the child can be devastating. Things like self-esteem, 
academic performance, decision making, drug and alcohol abuse. These are all things that are a direct reflection of being raised by an uninvolved or negligent parent. So let's review. There are four types of parenting styles. Those styles are authoritative, authoritarian, permissive, and uninvolved. Each style is associated with a different level of warmth and control. While the majority of us fall into the authoritative category, there isn't a one size fits all approach when it comes to parenting styles. But it's important to remember that there is a direct correlation between the parenting style that we use and our children's behavior and decision-making. The goal for my wife and I is to raise emotionally intelligent children who are able to thrive in this world while being happy, healthy, and whole. We strive to be present, loving parents who are both physically and emotionally available for them at all times. So I'll end this video right here. And please remember, like the video, follow Black People Parenting on YouTube and Instagram, and join us on Facebook. Search for our private Black People Parenting group and send us a request. We'd love to have you come in and hang out with us. And also don't forget to check out the Black People Parenting podcast, which is available on all podcast platforms. And so next time, I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.